Let's do some more examples of building redox tables. So remember what we're doing here is we're taking data from experiments and we're turning it into a redox table that lists the relative strengths of oxidizing and reducing agents. Let's start with this example. A student places single drops of cadmium 2 nitrate, mercury 2 nitrate, and platinum 2 nitrate solutions separately on a chromium metal strip. So if you're trying to visualize what's going on, it's just an experiment with a simple chromium metal strip and an eyedropper placing these different solutions on it. The student observed a spontaneous reaction for each test. With further experimentation, the student found that a platinum 2 solution reacts with mercury metal, but cadmium 2 and chromium 3 do not. The student also found that the platinum 2 solution reacts with the cadmium metal. Use this data to construct a reduction half reaction table. So I have the outline of the table done for you here. We obviously don't expect a metal to react with its own ion, but we need to compare how a metal reacts with the ions of another metal. So let's parse through our data here. We have drops of cadmium 3 nitrate reacting spontaneously with chromium metal. Just so you can visualize what's going on here, let's sketch that reaction. That is just a nitrate with a cadmium metal. So this is an ionic bond and it's cadmium 2, so we'll need two nitrates. This is reacting spontaneously with chromium solid. So obviously what's being produced, this is a single replacement reaction. So we're turning this into chromium nitrate. And chromium prefers a three plus charge. And then we're gonna have cadmium metal beside it. So we could quickly balance this with two of these and three of these. And then we're also going to need three of these and two of these. Now I'm not going to draw this reaction out for each and every one. I just want you to know completely what's going on. It's just a single replacement reaction. And in this case, it was spontaneous. So this reaction happens when you do it. So that means that the cadmium ion, since it was cadmium nitrate, reacts spontaneously with chromium solid. So we can fill an S in this box in our table. So similarly for the other two, mercury 2 nitrate is the mercury ion and it reacts spontaneously with the chromium metal. So this is also a spontaneous reaction. And the third one of that sentence was platinum 2 nitrate also reacts spontaneously with chromium. And we have to skip through to some more data. So the next piece of data was that a platinum 2 solution reacts with mercury metal. So that would be the platinum 2 ion spontaneous with mercury metal. Cadmium 2 and chromium 3 do not react spontaneously with mercury metal, so these two are non-spontaneous. And lastly, the student also found that platinum 2 solution reacts with cadmium metal. So platinum 2 ion reacting with cadmium metal. So you'll notice we've exhausted what it said in our paragraph. We've exhausted what the student actually did in this experiment, but we still haven't filled out our table completely. But we can find the rest of the data just by thinking about it. Let's look at this blank, for example, in platinum with cadmium ions. So we have a similar reaction to this one where we react platinum ions with cadmium solid. So that would be this one over here. How are those two similar? Well, it's the same two metals. It's just that you switch which one is as an ion and which one is a metal. Well, if the platinum ion reacted spontaneously with cadmium metal, then it's not going to be spontaneous to go the other way around because that's just the same reaction in the opposite order. So this one we can say is non-spontaneous. Just to verify what I'm talking about, let's look at this reaction equation that I drew out over here. If this is spontaneous with cadmium ions reacting with chromium metal, then going in the opposite way from chromium ions reacting with cadmium metal is going to be non-spontaneous. It can only be spontaneous in one direction or the other. So that lets us fill out this one on our chart in the same way. Let's keep looking at the blanks we have left. So our mercury ion with the cadmium metal. So the opposite to that would be the mercury metal with the cadmium ion. That was non-spontaneous, so the other direction should be spontaneous. Next, the mercury ion with the platinum metal it corresponds to the platinum ion with the mercury metal, which was spontaneous, so this one is going to be non-spontaneous. And we've got one blank left, platinum metal with chromium ions. So that corresponds with the chromium metal with the platinum ions and that was spontaneous. This one is going to be non-spontaneous.
So we've completed our chart and it's color coded so that green is what the student actually figured out by a reaction and blue is what we deduced from that. But we were asked to construct a reduction reaction half reaction table. So we know that a redox half reaction table should start with the strongest oxidizing agent on the top left and end with the strongest reducing agent on the bottom right. So the strongest oxidizing agent means the thing that is most likely to itself be reduced. So remember that reduction is a gain of electrons. So we start with a positive ion. We gain electrons to form a metal. So let's look at which ion is the most likely to be reduced or to be an oxidizing agent. Well, you'll see that the platinum ion reacts with every single metal possible. So that is, in our case, going to be the most spontaneous, the strongest oxidizing agent. So let's write that reaction down. We've got platinum 2 plus. And if that's going to form platinum metal, it's going to need to gain two electrons to do that. Our next best at being reduced is going to be the mercury ion because that still reacts with two things spontaneously. So that's going to be a similar reaction. It's going to be mercury 2 plus. It's going to have to gain two electrons to become mercury solid. Next best is cadmium ion, only reacts with one metal. So that would be cadmium 2 plus. Also has to gain two electrons to, to turn into cadmium solid. So finally, what's last left is chromium, chromium 3 plus, which didn't react with anything spontaneously in our list, but would have to gain three electrons in order to become chromium solid. So this is saying that our strongest reducing agent should be this chromium solid. Well, let's verify that by looking at our list in the other direction. That should mean that chromium as a solid reacts spontaneously in the other direction very well to form chromium ions. And if we look at that on our table, we'll see the chromium solid spontaneous with all of the ions. And similarly, we could go up the chart. Cadmium is the next best, reacts with at least two different things, etc. So I'll make sure these arrows are both double-headed because they could potentially happen in either direction. So what we've built right here is a mini redox half reaction table. I want to also mention how these tables are used. So the way we use these tables is that we can predict if a reaction will be spontaneous or not based on whether the oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent in the table. So let's look at a quick example. If I were to ask you, will a mercury ion react with cadmium metal? You'll look in the table and see that the mercury ion is above cadmium metal in the table. The oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent. So you could say, yes, that will react. If I were to ask you, does platinum metal react with the cadmium ion? You would look for a platinum metal and cadmium ion in the table, and you'd have to say, no, the reducing agent is in this case above the oxidizing agent, so this will not be a spontaneous reaction. So that is our redox spontaneity rule. A spontaneous redox reaction only occurs if the oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent in a table of reduction half reactions. Let's use that rule to follow another example that allows us to build a redox half reaction table. This will make it so that we don't have to draw that whole big chart every time. We can just make the table directly. So here's another example. Four metals are combined with each of four solutions of cations. The following reactions represent evidence collected. So we have two reactions that were spontaneous. We have two that were non-spontaneous. There is no evidence of reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to label the oxidizing and reducing agents. And then we're going to go based on the fact that we know if it was spontaneous, that the oxidizing agent has to be above the reducing agent. So let's look at this first one. We've got beryllium solid and cadmium 2 plus. Well, if we were going to label first the oxidizing agent, we know the oxidizing agent is itself reduced, it gains electrons, so that would be this cadmium 2 plus, whereas the reducing agent is itself oxidized, that would be this beryllium metal here. So the fact that this reaction was spontaneous tells us that the oxidizing agent, cadmium 2 plus, 
has to be above the reducing agent than agent in our table. So cadmium 2 plus has to happen somewhere above beryllium solid. Now we know this equation is going to look like this. So we can say in short that cadmium has to be above beryllium on the table. So similarly this in the second reaction we have H plus as our oxidizing agent and we have cadmium solid as our reducing agent. So now our new piece of information is that H plus has to be above cadmium on our table. So let's slide cadmium down there to make room. We know H has to be above there on our table. And let's also get information from the two non-spontaneous reactions. So beryllium in the next reaction would be the reducing agent because that's the solid and that would have to uh, lose electrons and itself be oxidized. So uh, calcium 2 plus would be the oxidizing agent there. And let's label the last one as well to H plus, that would be the oxidizing agent, and copper solid would be the reducing agent. And now let's interpret for our table. So the fact that there is no reaction between calcium ions and beryllium metal means that the oxidizing agent was not above the reducing agent. In other words, the oxidizing agent had to be below the reducing agent. So that tells us that calcium has to come below beryllium on our table. And lastly, we have copper solid with 2H+. Again, the oxidizing agent has to be below the reducing agent. So we need to make sure that H plus is below copper on our table. Well, right now, H plus is at the top of our table. So copper has to make it yet above that. So let's move our table down to make some more space. And we will put copper solid up here because it has to be above hydrogen. So now we just have to complete our table. So we need to add one electron to the hydrogen to form a solid, sorry, gas, I guess. Now, of course, we need to balance it. So we'll need two H pluses, which means we'll also need two electrons. And let's also make sure all of these reactions have double-headed arrows. For copper, we start with copper two plus. We add two electrons to form copper solid. For beryllium, we also start with beryllium two plus. We have to add two electrons to form beryllium solid. Calcium also starts as 2 plus, adds two electrons to form calcium solid. So that was a little easier. We now used our rule, the fact that we know, based on whether a reaction is spontaneous, whether the oxidizing agent or the reducing agent has to come above in the table, and we've built our table from there. Once again, we could use our table to make predictions. So if I were to ask you, will a reaction of copper ions with cadmium solid be spontaneous? You would find copper ions, cadmium solid on the table. You would say, since the oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent, that yes, that would be spontaneous. Similarly, I could ask you if hydrogen would react with calcium ions. To find calcium ions and hydrogen. And then you would say, no, our oxidizing agent is below the reducing agent, so it will not be spontaneous.